Mystery Theater. Mr. Perkins, and this is Mrs. Albertson. Yeah. How do you do? I am pleased. 
excuse me. Just sit down. Please sit down. You wouldn't believe how rare a stranger is. Yeah, well, uh, I'll get right to the point, Mr. Perkins. We've, uh, well, we've been looking for a place like this, a quiet little place, you know, to, well, to settle down in uh, permanently. Have you now? Well, there is a house available, just one. You quite sure that you want to be this far removed from worldly things? <laughs> That's exactly what we do want. Yes. Peace and quiet. I find the city lately just, well, it's just too much for me. I see. Did you feel the same way about it, Mrs. Elberson? Oh, why, yes. Not as strongly as my husband, perhaps, but now I've seen your town. Well, oh. good, good. Well, it's just about lunchtime. Oh, well, if you have an engagement... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Nothing of the sort. You can come to my house and have lunch with me, of course. Oh, no, really? We, we couldn't impose no, on No, no, we'll, we'll get a bite somewhere and meet you later. No, I won't hear of it. You're coming home with me. We'll enjoy a good country lunch. <laughs> As we call it dinner, you know. Oh. And then we'll proceed to a discussion of whether or not our sleepy village is the place you're looking for. Dear, I may not eat again for days. <laughs> Do you always eat like this at lunchtime? Ham steak, home fried potatoes, green beans. Well, it's really the main meal. Supper isn't quite as elaborate, oh. except on occasion. Well, it, it certainly was delicious. Yes. I'd be fat as a pig if I had to lunch like this every day. <laughs> Everybody ready for the apple pie? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Too much? Oh, yes. Uh, no, Lucas. I guess you better save the pie for supper. Want me to bring the coffee in here, Mr. Perkins, or in the sitting room? In the sitting room, I think, Lucas. Where should we go in? More comfortable talking in there than around the table. Now, if Lucas does everything else as well as he cooks, he's really a, a gem, Mr. Perkins. Does he live in? Oh, yes. Yes, has for ten years or more now. Uh, take that chair, won't you, Mrs. Arbison? Thank you. Yeah, it used to be my... Dear wife's favorite. Oh. Want me to pour, Miss Perkins, or just leave the tray? I put it on the coffee table here. I'll pour. You go have your dinner now, Lucas. Want anything? Just hold up. Yes. Now, Lucas is the only family I have since my wife passed over. He gets restless sometimes, talks about leaving me, but I, I don't think he ever will. I don't know what I'd do if he did. Uh, cream and sugar, both of you? Real cream? No, thanks. We'd both take it black. Ah, what a pity. Well, now, let's get down to the business of finding out whether or not you and Sleepy Village would suit each other. Well, the town suits me fine. We'll have to look at the house, of course. Oh, yes, of course. Um, what is your profession, Mr. Alberson? I'm, well, I was a college professor. American history. Oh. And I decided to leave that and, well, work on a book I'd had in mind. Good. Very good. Hey, the village could use a good historian. <laughs> Interesting history this place has. You'd be fascinated. Yes, I can imagine. Mm, Lucas makes good coffee, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I, I, I don't mean to pry, but uh, are you people... Uh, People who have a great many friends, that is, uh, to whom old friends are terribly important? Oh, well, we, we have an average number of friends, I suppose, although I, I can't see what... Well, we're living in an isolated place like this might be... Well, uh, if we miss them, we'll, we'll ask them to come and see us. Uh, yes. Uh, but you are looking for a, a place where you can get away from people... And I assume that includes friends as well as strangers. Uh, Mr. Perkins, I, I don't understand what difference all this makes to you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I hope I haven't offended you. It's a very small village, Mr. Alberson, and, uh, well, the relationships are very close. Intimate, you might say. We find we have to make sure we're getting the sort of people who will uh, blend. Oh, I see, a sort of... Uh... Gentleman's agreement, is that what you mean? Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing like that at all, no. Nothing whatever. It's just, uh, well, now, how can I make you understand? It, it, it's just that comings and goings upset our people terribly. We can't have people moving in and then just packing up and moving out again. 
It's, uh... Well, that's uh, quite impossible. I think perhaps the best plan would be not to move in in the first place. Oh, dear. Oh. I've done this very badly. I, I've given you the wrong impression altogether. Ralph, don't you think... Well, it, it's such a sweet little place, and, and maybe the reason we like it so much is that Mr. Perkins does make sure he has the right people before... Well, you know, before going on with it. Not just anybody would fit in here. You have to admit that. Would it help, Mr. Albertson, if I said I'd be very happy, very happy indeed to have you and Mrs. Albertson come and live in our community? There. You see, Ralph? Well, all right. At least we'll look at the house. Splendid. Well, I- I'll go and make the arrangements right now. <laughs> Before you have a chance to change your mind. I'd just like to make a phone call, if you'll excuse me. Please help yourself to more coffee. Wilma, Wilma, didn't you think that was a bit much? Well, except you know he's right. A little village like this is quite a a different proposition from a big city. It wouldn't be a good thing for either the villagers or us if we moved in and and then all hated each other. I suppose not, but it's very strange all the same. (coughs) Oh, Lucas, I was just telling Mr. Perkins the coffee's up to your standard. Very good. May I speak to you in confidence? What? Oh, well, yes, of course. Have you, uh, uh, have you decided to stay? Well, nothing's been settled yet. Mr. Perkins is making arrangements now for us to see the house. Oh, but uh, that don't mean, does it, that uh, you're dead set on staying? Oh, no, of course not. The house may not be suitable at all. Although I'll be surprised if it isn't. Well, if it does work out so that you can't stay... I'd like to ask... Uh, wait, wait, just a minute. Can't stay? Well, I mean to say, if it works out so as you don't, I'd be most beholden to you if you'd let me come with you when you go. Oh, oh, well, of course, if you want to ride, we'd be perfectly willing to take you along. But Mr. Perkins was just saying... Oh, he don't want me to go. I know that. But uh, it's not fair, is it, uh, to keep a man against his wishing? Uh, I'll talk to you again after you've... Uh, I'll talk to you later on. All right. Uh, uh, don't tell Mr. Perkins we spoke. Oh. Well, that was pretty spooky, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I think Lucas has been watching too many late movies. You know, this this whole setup seems... I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see the house, at least. Oh, we're going to like it, Ralph. It, it's going to be just what we're looking for. Well, splendid. Couldn't have worked out better. Oh, I know you're going to love it here. Uh, Mr. Perkins, when can we see the house? In due time. What do you mean, in due time? Well, what I arranged for just now on the phone was for you to meet the village fathers. It was a lucky thing. I are having a meeting anyway this afternoon on another matter, and... Uh... Why should we meet the village fathers? Oh, didn't I mention it? Well, you'll have to appear before the village fathers before you can consider settling in Sleepy Village. Uh, you'll have to be approved. If a man wants to buy a house in a town that he finds attractive, if he has the money to pay for it, even if one house comprises the entire market, doesn't it seem odd to ask him to appear before the town's governing body and establish his worthiness? But Sleepy Village is a place of many, many odd characteristics. We'll encounter more of them when I return shortly with Act Two. Wishing to escape the overcrowding, the noise, the pollution, the tension of the big city is quite common these days. But perhaps there is such a thing as going too far in the other direction. Ralph Elberson is beginning to think that's just what he and his wife have done. They found a place aptly named Sleepy Village, but the mayor, Ellis Perkins, has told them that they must appear before the village fathers and be found acceptable before they may consider settling down. Of all the nonsense I have ever been subjected to, this has got to be the most ridiculous. Unusual, perhaps, Mr. Albertson, but not ridiculous. There are elements involved here that I'm not free to explain to you at this time. Well, let's get out of here. Oh, Ralph, not before we... Before we what? 
appear in supplication before a, a bunch of small town... No, no, I won't do it, Wilma. You'll be treated with the utmost dignity, Mr. Abinson. Please believe me. What have you got going on here, Mr. Perkins, that you're so careful about? I mean, you don't screen people like this unless there's something going on that you can't afford to let become generally known. Well, you're quite wrong about that, Mr. Albertson. We're very proud. I don't see why you have to be so suspicious, Ralph. They just want to make sure we're compatible. Exactly. She said it exactly, Mr. Albertson. And we have nothing to lose. Well, now, are you really so taken with this place? I guess I really am. <sighs> All right. All right, for that reason and no other, I'll talk to your village fathers. But don't either of you expect me to get down on my knees. Meeting starts promptly at 3.30. Oh, Ralph, surely you don't think... I think we're damn fools for having any part of this, if you really want to know what I think. Uh, Miss Perkins. Yes, Ogus? Tell her on the telephone what to talk to you. I didn't hear the phone ring. Who is it? Uh, I wouldn't tell me his name, just said it was almighty important. I told him I'd tell you that. Oh, dear. I mustn't be late for the meeting. Well, I won't be a minute. Wasn't no call on the telephone, you know. I just told him there was. Lucas, why did you do that? I want to have a word with you. You ain't uh, really figuring to stay in Sleepy Village, are you? Well, we're going to see the village fathers. We don't know yet whether we're going to stay or not. Well, I wouldn't. Indeed. I wouldn't, Mr. Albertson, if I was you. Why not, Lucas? Lots of reasons. Well, if it turns out you don't have to stay, you promised to take me away with you, remember? What do you mean, if we don't have to stay? Well, if we, it works out sometimes. Boy, here he comes. I better Lucas, get... there wasn't anybody on that phone. There wasn't? No, there wasn't. There was when I talked to him. That's all I know. Well... Well, no time to worry about that now. Are you ready to go? As ready as I'll get, I guess. Uh, Mr. Albertson is an historian of considerable repute. Now, as you all know, the village records have been gathering dust in the archives for too long. Sleepy Village has a proud past. I have no doubt whatever that Mr. Albertson could be prevailed upon to go through those records and put them in order and set them down in readable form for all to enjoy. I feel no hesitation whatever in recommending them wholeheartedly as future citizens of Sleepy Village. heard of such a thing. I, I I just never in my whole life heard of such a crazy thing. Well, it did seem... Well, I, I thought it was sort of funny. Funny? Ralph, why don't you just sit down and relax, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, Wilma. No reason why I should take it out on you. Well, it is sort of out of proportion. I admit that. But, but then there can't be many places like this left in the whole world, do you think? The way things are today. And to keep it this way... I guess they'd have to protect themselves. Otherwise, it would be just like any other small town. Well, I don't like to be interrogated. Congratulations! Oh, 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 I am so pleased. They've accepted you unanimously. Not one single objection. Well, I, I can't remember the last time that happened. Okay. So can we go and see the house now and get that over with? What? Oh, the house. Well, now, don't worry about that. I think this calls for a celebration first, don't you? No, I, I honestly don't, if you want my opinion. Now, what we'd better do is take a look at the house and then do something about finding a place to spend the night. Now, 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 now. I'm not going to listen to any arguments about it. You're just going to have to leave everything to me. Well, you have to say one thing for this town. It's not short on hospitality. <laughs> Mr. Alberson, I know that today has been an upsetting experience for you, appearing before the village fathers and all, but that's all in the past now, don't you see? You're one of us now, or same as. You and Mrs. Albertson belong here. It's been decided. Oh, decided. Now, look, you and your village fathers have spent the day checking us out. Has it occurred to you at all to wonder... How you look to us? 
I'm as fussy about who lives next door to me as my next door neighbor is. Ralph, please, don't you think that... And I don't like people prying into my business. I, I don't like people sitting in judgment, deciding whether or not I'm good enough to mingle with. You use the word neighbor, Mr. Albertson. That's not quite the right word. We're closer than neighbors here. We're more in the nature of a family. Let's say... Let's say you were considering adopting the child. Now, you'd want to know something about him, wouldn't you? His background. What would it be like living in the same house with him? Mr. Perkins, I did not come here to be adopted. I came here thinking that maybe, just maybe, I, I might want to buy a house and settle down here. And, but at this moment, it doesn't seem like a very good idea. Oh, dear, dear. Uh, Mrs. Albertson, you don't feel the same way your husband does, do you? Not as strongly, I guess, but I... Well, I can see his point. Well, oh, it'll, it'll work itself out. Would you two care for another sip of brandy before bedtime? No, no, thank you. Uh, if we're going to find a motel with a vacancy, I think we'd better start looking right now. Oh, oh no, no, that won't be necessary. Nearest motel that I know of... Uh, well, he's just the other side of Marbury, anyway, and that's close on to a 50-mile drive. All the more reason for starting now. In my guest room upstairs, a good deal more comfortable than any motel room you're apt to find around these parts. Uh, Mr. Perkins, I, I really do appreciate your hospitality. I don't want you to think that I don't, but... Look, I'm sorry, but this is nonsense. This just isn't the way things are done. Uh, uh... You you find that things are not done in Sleepy Village the way they're done outside. Really, Mr. Albertson, we're exactly what you came looking for. And now you're resisting it. Why? If you can believe that such a place might exist, believe it strongly enough to set out on a journey looking for it, why do you find it so difficult to believe that it does exist once you found your way to it. You know he's right, Ralph? It's... Well, it's, there's just something creepy about it. All right, we'll, we'll spend the night here. Mr. Perkins, I'm sorry if I've seemed rude, but... No, it's very kind of you, I'm sure. Yes, thank you. We'll stay. <laughs> Perkins, I was just about to go on upstairs to bed. Uh, come in here for a minute, please, will you? I want to talk to you. Oh, sit down, will you? You don't have to act like a servant. Well, as long as I am one, I reckon I might as well act like one. Lucas, you're not planning to do anything foolish, are you? I don't know what you mean, Mr. Perkins. You remember the Collinses? The night they spent here before they moved into the old Bradley place? Oh. And I wouldn't want a repetition of that. The Albertsons have seen the village fathers and been accepted. It's all settled. You'd be very unwise to interfere. Well, no, I wouldn't do that, Mr. Perkins. Uh, that there with the Collinses, that was a long time ago. Before I got rightly settled in, you might say. You don't have to worry. Good. Because it wouldn't work anyway. I give you my word. It wouldn't work at all. Wilma, I suppose you think I've overreacted, but this is the damnedest thing I ever heard of. Yes. But it, it's kind of sweet. Don't you think? Well, I might think so, yes, if it weren't for the... Village fathers and their interrogation. I didn't like that, Wilma. No, but once we're part of the village... I still won't like it. I'm not at all sure yet that we're going to be part of the village. I have a feeling, though. No, there's more to this than old Perkins has told us. This... I don't know, there's some kind of a catch. I, I get a wrong feeling. What is that? <laughs> How settling. Or somebody knocking at the door. Somebody knocking? I think who it is. Oh, yes, Lucas. Uh, I uh, I have to talk to you. Well, we're all ready for bed. Can't I wait until morning? Oh, I've got to get it settled tonight, Mr. Albertson. If I can, i got to. Can I come in and shut the door? 
It's okay, Ralph. Okay. All right. Uh, what is it, Lucas? You folks don't really want to stay in this place, do you? Well, we haven't decided yet. We haven't seen the house. We like the town all right. But, of course, we, we can't decide anything definite until we've seen the house. House ain't got nothing to do with it, Mrs. Albertson. Nothing whatsoever. Of course it has. We'd be living there. Lucas, Lucas, do you have something to tell us? Is there something about this place that we ought to know before we make up our minds? There sure shooting is. But I don't know if you're going to believe me when I tell you. But Collins's didn't. Collins's? Last folks come looking for a house to live in here before you. It's been oh, eight, ten years now. Eight or ten years since anybody's been here asking about a house? Now, to the way place, this, more than you know. You don't just stumble onto Sleepy Village. You got to be, uh, well, I don't know, led, I guess. I told the Collinses that, but they wouldn't believe me. No, wait a minute, Lucas. Led by whom? Well, I couldn't say. I asked the Collinses to take me away with them, too, but they didn't go. They stayed. Still here. Always will be now, of course. I can't understand why you keep asking people to take you away with them, Lucas. I mean, if you want to leave Sleepy Village, why don't you just leave? Oh, no. Well, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't if I tried it all by myself. I think you ought to make up your mind to get out of here, Mr. Albertson, not just so as you can take me with you, but for your own good. Maybe they'll still let you go. Let us go? Well, damn well let us go if we want to go. I sure hope so. We could still leave tonight. Better chance to get away after dark than in the daytime. Now, look, you... You're going to have to explain that, Lucas. If you want us to take you away with us in case we go, well, you're going to have to tell us what is going on here. Well, they're all dead, you know. Uh, not me. I don't think. But all the rest of them dead as dead can be. Been dead for years. <laughs> village full of dead people? People who walk the streets, speak with a Down East accent, overeat at dinner time, quarrel, behave, in other words, as we expect living people to behave? Well, to clear that one up, it would be necessary to define death, which would involve defining life. Would you care to try? Perhaps the definitions will be forthcoming when I return shortly with Act Three. Preoccupations ever since he became man has been with life after death and the form it will take. That it will take some form he must believe, for the mortal span is too brief to be acceptable as the entire package. He delves, seeks, and pries, and sometimes, at strange moments snatched from the commonplace, he seems to get a glimpse. Oh, but you can't possibly go. It's never happened before. Then this will be the first time, Mr. Perkins, because we are going. Well, no, no, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go and have a look at your house and then come back here and discuss it over a good hearty breakfast. How does that strike you? Well, frankly, it leaves me cold. We'll get our breakfast along the road somewhere. Oh, dear. Uh, Mrs. Albertson. I have to agree with my husband. It, it seems a shame, but I, I don't see how we could possibly be happy here. Not that I believe what Lucas says for a minute, but... What does Lucas say? Oh, oh that's that's not important. We're grateful for your hospitality, Mr. Perkins, and we both agree that you have a beautiful little village here, but, well, it's just not for us. Now, we're all packed. We'll be out of here in a few minutes. Oh, it's going to be hard. Hard to find another place we like as much. We'll never find one as spooky, if that's what you mean. Ralph? Yes? Do you believe what Lucas said? Well, that everybody in town is dead? What's that up ahead? Hmm? Uh, I, I can't tell. It looks like a, uh, like a tree across the road or a telephone pole, maybe. There's a man there. 
see? Off to the right. Oh, good. That, the two of us ought to be able to clear that thing off the road without too much trouble. Ralph, he's got a gun. What the hell? Can't get through this way, mister. Sure we can. The two of us can move that log. Ain't nobody moving the log or driving through. Better just turn back. The only thing you can do. Let's turn around, Ralph. The way he's holding that gun... Hey, what see? is this? A roadblock? Are you trying to force us to turn back? Got this shotgun here, Mr. Alberton. Sure hope I don't have to use it. I was waiting for you to come back. Well, I do sit down. I know you're angry. Angry? But... You don't know about half of it. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Well, I intend to explain everything. You mentioned earlier that Lucas told you something, Mrs. Albertson. Do you mind telling me what it was? What did he say? He... He said you're all dead. He said everybody in the village is dead, except him. Yes. Well, he is too, of course. What are you talking about? Oh, it's quite true. We're all changed over. We're all dead, if you want to use that word, although, as you can see, it isn't accurate. We've finished with the life you're experiencing now and gone on to the next. Oh, cut it out, Perkins. Ralph, you wanted him to explain? Thank you, Mrs. Albertson. It isn't an easy thing to give credence to in the beginning, I know. Continued existence after what you think of as death is as natural as your having been born in the first place. People are not simply extinguished when they finish the first phase. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Perkins, but I, I, I just don't buy it. Why would you want us to settle in your village? We're not dead. Two... Living persons in a village full of dead people. Why? A sleepy village is not the place you drive to. It's a place you think yourself into when you're sufficiently repelled by the society, the circumstances, which is to say the life in which you find yourself trapped. Then you find your way to sleepy village. And once you've done that, you become candidates for residence. Then what you mean is... Candidates for death. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Well, now, it isn't death as you think of it, Mr. Albertson. You'll have to change over, yes. But you'll hardly notice it. Dead is dead, as I see it, no matter what comes after. The very fact that you found us, found your way to our village, implies a natural readiness for the change. It's... uh, Well, don't you understand that it's more than half done already? You're here. That says all that needs to be said. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Perkins... I think I'd like to be alone with my wife for, for a while, if you don't mind. Uh, will you come with me, Wilma? A remarkable thing is about to happen to us, and we need to make ourselves ready. Yes, yes. That's very good. Well, I'm not ready. I won't be ready. You know, I don't understand you at all, Ralph. Why do you suddenly... No, no, no. Please, please, Wilma. We want to make the change gracefully, don't we? We need to prepare ourselves. Wilma, do you think for a minute that I'm going to... Are you sick? No way. I just realized that they have to be humored, that's all. Now, look, we've we've somehow found our way into a village full of nuts. That's what's happened. Now, look, we've got to play it their way if we hope to get out of here in one piece. Because that idiot downstairs means what he says. Lucas. Where's Lucas? He must know how to get away. I don't know. I think he expected to ride out of town with us in the car. All the same, I think we ought to see if we can find him. Well, let's give him a little time. I have a feeling he'll come to us. There. There, that'll be Lucas. Ah, 
Lucas, come in. Where is Perkins? Uh, went out a while back. I waited a few minutes before I come up just to make sure he wasn't still snooping around. I expect he's making the arrangements about you folks right this minute. Arrangements? Well, you know, they won't want to waste any more time than they have to. Well, you folks been cutting up. Lucas, Lucas, can you get us out of here? I think I can sneak us out all right. It's going to be easy, though. Lucas, if you knew the roads would be blocked, then you weren't expecting just a ride out of town with us in the car, were you? Uh, might have yesterday. Hid in the trunk or somewhere. Well, if it's just a matter of walking out, not going by car, why haven't you done it long ago? Why wait for somebody to take you? Well, it's a funny thing. I've gone as far as the village line a hundred times or more. But I just don't seem to be able to push my way across it somehow, standing there all by myself. I can't say why. Well, what makes you think it would be any easier if we were with you? I always figured if I had somebody there with me, holding my hand, as you might say, I could make a... Never do it without, I know that. All right. Uh, can we leave now? Have to leave your car behind and your suitcases and them things. Well, we'll come back for them. I intend to come back here with the police and clean this place out. Uh, yep. Well, I wouldn't count on it if I were you. Now, just walk along natural, talking and uh, going on like I was uh, showing you around. Here's how we'll do it. We'll go over and cross the line right in back of the church. Village ends right there, back of the church. Yeah, won't they be patrolling there? I wouldn't think so, no, no. The village folk don't go in back of the church. Never. Why not? Something back there scares them off, seems like. Lucas, you say everybody in the village is dead. Everybody but you. Yep. How does it happen you're not? Wondered about that a good deal myself. Come to the conclusion, it just slipped their minds. I wasn't important enough for folks to take much notice of when I showed up. How did you happen to come here in the first place? I can't hardly recall anymore. I was hitching at the time. Hitchhiking? Uh, yep. Mr. Perkins put me right to work as soon as the village father said it was all right. His wife had just made the second change and he needed somebody. The second change? Oh, well, they die. Well, they don't live forever here in the village. Second changeover, they call it, and I reckon that's what it is. Oh, they're dead, all right. Everybody but us. That's the line. Right there, at the foot of that old oak tree. Other side of the oaks, out of the village. But why do we have to hide here? Can't we just walk across the line and be out of the village? Not and be sure somebody won't take a pot at us as we can't. Ain't nobody ever got out of this village, to my knowledge, once they've been accepted by the village fathers. I... Ain't sure I can make it. What? What do you mean? Well, if I get to holding back, now you just take my hands and pull. You hear me? No matter what I say, you drag me on across that line, past that old oak. But if you ask us not... Don't pay me no mind. Drag me over by the heels if you have to. Well, time to go, I reckon. Here. Take me by the hands, both of you. What, were you shaking like a leaf? I ain't never been so scared in my whole life. <clears throat> you two just walk on up to that tree and across. Come on. Come on, don't hang well, back. I'll just stay on here, see that you two get across all right, but I'll just stay on here. Oh, come on, let's go. Change my mind, Mr. Alberton. I reckon I'll just stay on here. No. Now, we're taking you with us, whether you like it or not. That's what you asked us to do, and that's what we're doing. Well, that was a while back, Mr. Albertson. The fella can change his mind. I'm sorry. Let's let me go. You let go of me, you hear? I'll, I'll yell for Eric Grafton if you don't. What I said before don't make no difference. You let go of me. You come on, will you? Now, I ain't the going. Ernie, Ernie, down here, back in the church. You shut his damn fool up. We'll push him. Push him. Get behind him. Push him. If he doesn't want to. All he's been talking about for the last 24 hours is wanting to get away. Now, come on, you. There. There. We're, we're out of 
their miserable village. <gasps> We're across the line, Lucas. Lucas. Ralph. He's not here. But of course he's here. Lucas. Ralph. Look around you. For heaven's sake, look around you. Ma'am, where's the devil did the idiot get to? I I didn't notice it before. Oh. It wasn't here before. Ralph. Hmm? Read that. On the head, don't. Go ahead, read it. Ellis. It's almost worn away. Ellis. Perkins. 1963? Well, that's what it said on the headstones. And when Ralph and Wilma looked for it, the village wasn't there. They found nothing but wasteland and an old church, crumbling from age and disrepair. I'll be back shortly. eventually in a lovely little town in Connecticut. And Wilma says dreamily sometimes as they sit down to lunch, I wonder what Ellis Perkins is having for dinner today and who's fixing it for him. Well, sleepy villages may come and go, but Mystery Theater will be back with another account of the improbable but not the impossible. Our cast included Norman Rose, Martha Greenhouse, Court Benson, and Ken Harvey. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.